This video was made possible thanks to your support on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon for early access to videos and additional content. As the fourth most populous state in the United States of America, New York has seen its fair share of grisly and chilling cases. It is the backdrop to the murders of some of the world's most influential figures, including Malcolm X and John Lennon, and was the hunting ground of the infamous serial killer David Berkowitz, or as he is better known, the Son of Sam. Many of its crimes go unnoticed by the mainstream media, as they are overshadowed by one or two notorious cases, and so today, we aim to shed light on some of these lesser-known cold cases. In this episode, we'll be exploring two unsettling, unsolved cases from New York. Audrey Heron. If you were to ask her friends and family to describe Audrey Heron, you'd receive responses like spunky, full of life, and compassionate. A part-time nurse, Audrey worked at the Columbia Green Long-Term Healthcare Facility, a nursing home located in the town of Catskill, and she was, by all accounts, loved by her patients and staff. It seemed that she was built for nursing, and while speaking with Crime Watch Daily, her eldest daughter recalled how much Audrey adored her job. Little is documented about Audrey's life outside of her career. She had her first daughter, Sonsia, at the age of 22, and later went on to marry the son of a wealthy golf course owner named Jeff Heron, with whom she had two more children, her son Quinn, and two years later, her daughter Katie. Jeff, on the whole, was liked by Audrey's family and friends. Sonsia remembered that, although she still had her biological father, Jeff never treated her any differently and doted on her like she was one of his own. It was a miserable evening on August 29th, 2002, when Audrey left her place of work and headed home for the night at around 11 p.m. It was rainy and foggy as the 31-year-old navigated her way back to her house in Freehold, about 12 to 15 miles from her workplace. According to grainy CCTV footage retrieved from Cumberland Farms, Audrey turned her black 1994 Jeep Grand Cherokee with New York license plates X233UV left after she left the car park at the nursing home and drove westbound on State Route 23 in the area of Jefferson Heights in Catskill. This was her expected route back to Freehold. Unfortunately, no other CCTV shows Audrey's journey and she never returned home. The following morning, Jeff called friends and family looking for his missing wife but nobody had seen her. Alarmed by this fact, he notified Audrey's stepmother, who worked at the division headquarters for the New York State Police, and officers were immediately dispatched to the family home and the 31-year-old's place of employment. Several clues indicated to authorities that Audrey wasn't a runaway who'd opted to start a new life somewhere else. For one, she had left all three of her children behind. Her eldest daughter, Sonsia, who was 10, had been on holiday in Florida with her maternal grandmother for the last month before Audrey's disappearance. The 31-year-old had a doctor's appointment the morning after her disappearance and was due to collect Sonsia afterwards. Loved ones describe Audrey as a devoted mother and don't believe she'd have left without her children. Additionally, she never turned up to her doctor's appointment. It would have been odd for her to have made it if she planned to leave. Following Audrey's disappearance, law enforcement brought in cadaver dogs and a helicopter to help search. Both her route home and many detour routes she may have taken were repeatedly checked, and officers carried out a nine-mile radius foot search of every building, route, and body of water. Still, no sign of the missing mother of three was ever found. Over 1,000 leads were investigated concerning the case, but none of them panned out. In 2018, Law enforcement received a tip that the 31-year-old's body had been buried on a property in the area. Investigators examined the scene on foot using cadaver dogs and drained a pond on the property, but nothing was found. Over the years, Audrey's husband Jeff has come under fire for his behavior following her disappearance. Officers speaking with True Crime Daily reported that Jeff was somewhat cooperative, but would not elaborate further. 
While he allowed investigators to search the family home and willingly took a polygraph test, his conduct in other instances has been heavily critiqued. Reportedly, after Audrey went missing, Jeff failed to participate in the immediate search. He also does not engage in the fundraisers that family and friends continue to hold so they can carry out further searches for the mother of three. There are also rumors that his polygraph tests were inconclusive, but this seems to be unsubstantiated. And as we've noted several times before on the channel, polygraph tests are not reliable at establishing the truth. Notably, no one has ever been able to come up with a theory as to why Jeff would want to make his wife disappear. The couple were, by all accounts, happy, and there is no evidence of either party having an affair. Additionally, Jeff would have no financial motive, given that he and his family were already wealthy. Sonsia has stated her belief that Jeff refrains from engaging with the media to protect the children, and other family members have noted that he was distraught following the disappearance. But some of Audrey's friends have expressed their wariness of the father of two. Another theory in Audrey's case stems from a local rumor that the 31-year-old was abducted by members of the Russian mob. This is because the golf course owned by the Heron family did, at least at one time, have a silent partner who was Russian. According to local gossip, the family owed this anonymous Russian individual a large sum of money, and so Audrey was abducted to force the family to pay up. Law enforcement did investigate this notion, even stationing an officer at the family home in case they received a ransom demand. But ultimately, the police found no evidence this was the chain of events that led to her disappearance. The final theory in Audrey's case is that she fell victim to a simple accident and that her car and remains are somewhere in a body of water waiting to be found. This is because the area in which she was driving on the night of her disappearance was heavily wooded and poorly lit. As we stated earlier, the weather was wet and foggy, and Audrey's car didn't have fog lights. It's possible that her car wound up submerged in a body of water somewhere after she became disoriented or visually impaired by the bad weather and low lighting. It's been two decades since Audrey was last seen alive. In the years since she went missing, her credit cards have not been used, her bank accounts has not been touched, and her phone has been inactive. Investigators noted that they attempted to ping her phone, but received no connection. Audrey's daughters, Katie and Sonsia, are both now grown adults, and they have both pursued a career in nursing. Talking about her mother, Sonsia fondly reflects on her memories of the time they spent together, playing video games and having girls' nights, which included going for dinner and getting manicures. According to investigators, there are several persons of interest in the case, but they have never been publicly identified. As far as we know, Jeff Heron has never been named a suspect or person of interest. Audrey's car has never been located, and foul play is suspected in her case. 31-year-old Audrey May Heron was last seen in Catskill, New York, at around 11 p.m. on August 29, 2002, when she left the Columbia Green long-term healthcare facility to return to her home in Freehold. Notably, according to the Charlie Project, some reports state that she was last seen in Cairo, New York. At the time of her disappearance, Audrey was wearing a blue turtleneck top, dark green medical scrubs, a yellow gold necklace, and a watch with a white leather band and white metal face. She is described as a white woman with dark blonde to light brown hair and hazel eyes, and a scar on her right thumb that covers a portion of her hand. She also has a mole on the inside of her right knee. She is a petite individual, standing at 5 feet and weighing around 105 pounds. She may wear eyeglasses and is known to smoke cigarettes. Her maiden name is Turk. If she is still alive, she will be 51 years old. If you have any information about Audrey's disappearance, you can call the New York State Police at 518-622-8600. Sarah Ann Wood. On August 18th, 1993, 12-year-old Sarah Ann Wood left her home on Heckerdam Road in the town of Frankfurt to visit her local church, Norwich Corners Church on Roberts Road and Grafenberg Road in Sequoy. Sarah attended summer Bible school here, less than one mile from her family home. At the church, the young girl collected some poster board, a church songbook, and some 8 by 10 inch plastic transparencies. After this, she turned back to return home. Sarah left the church on her pink and white 10-speed mountain bike 
and was last seen riding down Roberts Road and pedaling up the steep hill on Heckerdam Road, about four tenths of a mile from her house. Despite being so close to her home, Sarah never made it, and she was never seen again. Later that evening, when family, friends, and law enforcement searched for the missing girl, they stumbled across something in the brush, the supplies Sarah was last seen carrying, which were scattered haphazardly on the ground, and her distinctive pink and white bike, which had been carefully lent against a tree. The items were located 100 feet from Hackerdam Road. It seems that the investigation into Sarah's disappearance was short-lived, because just three years later, a man named Lewis Lentz Jr., a 45-year-old former janitor, confessed to abducting and murdering the 12-year-old girl. Lent was already serving time in prison after being convicted in 1995 of kidnapping, larceny, assault with a dangerous weapon, and assault and battery, following his attempts to abduct another 12-year-old girl the year before in Massachusetts. During his time in custody, Lent confessed to the murders of two children. Reportedly, Lent's first victim was 12-year-old James Bernardo, who disappeared from a cinema in Pittsfield, Massachusetts on October 22, 1990. At the time, Lent was an employee of the cinema, and he bumped into James while outside the establishment. Using a knife and threats of violence, he forced James to go with him and took the young boy back to his apartment, where he taped him to his bed, cut off his clothes, and assaulted him. He then murdered James by hanging. James's nude body was found in Newfield, New York. While it was far from the abduction scene, it was close to where Lent's childhood home was located. At the time of the crime, Lent was not considered a person of interest, nor as a suspect. In Lent's second confession, he admitted to abducting and murdering Sarah Wood. He claimed that he had been looking for a victim when he came across the young girl, and once again, he used a knife to force her into his van. He then bound the 12-year-old's hands and drove her upstate into the Adirondack Mountains, where he raped Sarah before clubbing her to death with a heavy tree branch. He then buried her body, although he never checked to see if she was still breathing beforehand, noting, quote, I don't like to touch dead bodies. He had come to the mountain range equipped with the tools needed to bury the corpse. Initially, after confessing, Lent said he had buried Sarah's body in a clearing near Raquette Lake in the Adirondack Mountains. Sometime later, he drew a map of the burial location for authorities, indicating that it was in or around the town of Inlet, New York. However, searches of the area didn't produce any evidence as to Sarah's whereabouts, and Lent later admitted that she wasn't really there. He went on to refuse to tell law enforcement where the remains were, and then claimed he'd buried her body with another of his victims, whom he didn't want uncovered. Eventually, Lent recanted his confessions, but it was too late. He was convicted of the abduction and murder of both Sarah Wood and James Bernardo. In 2013, he confessed to the murder of James Lusher, a 16-year-old boy. James Lusher vanished from Westfield, Massachusetts in 1992. Authorities declined to pursue the case in court because Lent was already serving life behind bars, but they searched for his body in Greenwater Pond. Despite a three-day search, however, no traces of James were recovered from the area. Although Lent has been convicted of two murders, there is much debate and speculation surrounding his confessions. He claimed he was subject to blackouts and memory lapses, and in one Associated Press report, he stated that this was due to a close encounter he had with a UFO in 1974. This may suggest that Lent has mental health issues, which could skew his confessions. It has also been theorized that Lent didn't act alone, and that he may have had an accomplice who is still free. Sarah's body has never been found, and in 2015, her case was reopened. Despite the conviction, her case is considered unsolved. Lent is currently serving life in prison at Colony Correctional Facility in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. After her disappearance, Sarah's family founded the Sarah Ann Wood Rescue Center, a branch of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, which was later renamed the Mohawk Valley Branch. Furthermore, her story inspired a small group of cyclists, led by her older brother Dusty and her father Robert, to raise awareness about her case and the Mohawk Valley branch of the NCMEC by riding from Utica, New York, to the US Capitol while wearing teal and pink jerseys. Now, every year, thousands of cyclists participate, 
raising funds for the NCMEC and shedding light on not just Sarah's case, but the cases of hundreds of missing children all across the country. They have now expanded their clothing colors to include purple for the police officers who work on these cases and white to symbolize all the missing children. 12-year-old Sarah Ann Wood was last seen on August 18th, 1993, while pedaling up a steep hill on Hackerdam Road in the town of Frankfort, New York. She was just five feet tall and 96 pounds at the time of her disappearance, and was last seen wearing a pink t-shirt with Guess Who embroidered across the front, turquoise shorts, brown sandals, and a headband. She may have been carrying tortoise shell prescription glasses and a fluorescent green and white keychain, with a silver ring on it, as well as four keys. Sarah is described as a white girl with brown hair and blue eyes, and has scars on both of her legs. One toe on each foot is disabled, and she has dimpled cheeks. She also has freckles on her face, and her hair was shoulder length at the time of her disappearance. Some agencies spell her name as Anne without the E. Foul play is suspected in her case, but if she is still alive, she will be 40 years old. If you have any information about Sarah's disappearance, you can call the New York State Police at 315-366-6000. And there you have the facts. Please leave a comment down below with your own theories and speculations, and remember to like this video and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching. Stay alert, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.